In this video, we'll focus on the exclusive OR operation, also known as the XOR operation. An elementary understanding of binary will help you to get the most out of this video. It will also come in useful if you've previously met logic gates. Here's a 16-bit CPU register with a binary value stored inside it. Typical computers these days use 32-bit or 64-bit CPU registers, but the principles of the bitwise XOR operation can be illustrated perfectly well with a 16-bit register. 16-bit registers were more typical of computers in the 1970s. This register contains an unsigned integer. In other words, it's being treated as a positive whole number. The integer has been encoded with 16 bits, namely 2 bytes. Normally, integers require 32 bits, that's 4 bytes. But for the purposes of this discussion, we'll stick with 16 bits. Looking at the place values, you can see that this is the number 85 in denary. And here's another 16-bit unsigned integer. This is 182 in denary. The XOR operation, namely the exclusive OR operation, is similar to the OR operation, but with one subtle difference. When the XOR operation is performed, only one or the other of a pair of bits exclusively must be one in order for the output to be one. Put more simply, a corresponding pair of bits must be different from each other. In this example, the result is 227. 85 XOR 182 is 227. Let's see this in vb.net. I've got a very simple Windows Forms application with nothing but a button on it. And here's the code for the button. I'm declaring three integers, x, y, and z, and I'm assigning 85 to x and 182 to y. Z is calculated by XORing X and Y together. Notice that in VB.net, the XOR operator is the word XOR. The result is being output using a simple message box. Run the program. 227, as expected. Here's the same thing in JavaScript. In my web page, I have a function called bitwise XOR operator. I'm declaring three variables, x, y, and z, just like I did in vb.net, and I'm assigning 85 to x and 182 to y. z is calculated using the XOR operator, which in JavaScript is a caray. The result is then output using an alert. My function is triggered by a button on the web page. Same result. And here's the same operation in Python. Notice that Python also uses the caray as an XOR operator. 227 again. The XOR operation can be used to manipulate bit flags with bit masks. This is the central heating system we discussed in the previous videos about the AND and the OR operators, which were used to check the status of the heaters and to turn them on and off if necessary. This bit mask contains all ones. So, if a heater is off, it will be switched on. If it's already on, it will be switched off. Perhaps inverting a set of bits like this is somewhat unrealistic in our central heating scenario. But a bitwise XOR operation has many other uses, particularly in the field of cryptography. Consider this group of bits. This is actually the ASCII code for a lowercase letter a. Here's a different bit pattern that doesn't represent anything in particular. This will be used as an encryption key. When the original bit pattern is XORed with the key, a new bit pattern is generated. This result happens to be the ASCII code for the digit 4. We've effectively encrypted the letter a, and because it's a bitwise operation, it can be done very quickly. But the real benefit of using the XOR operation in particular lies in the fact that the same key can be applied in exactly the same way to decrypt the ciphertext. Look at what happens when the ASCII code for the 4 is XORed with the very same key. The original bit pattern is produced. We're back to the letter A. 
A number of modern crypto systems and hashing algorithms make use of this principle because it's simple and very fast. In practice, the XOR cipher is applied to much longer bit sequences rather than individual bytes, and with much longer keys. XOR is also used in conjunction with other techniques, such as bitwise shift operations, as you'll see.